Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mega House Variable Action Heroes One Piece Trafalgar Law Figure. So what is going on everybody? How is everyone doing today? Daredevil19 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the variable action heroes Trafalgar Law and he just seems like he's a really badass character in the show. I only seen him a few times but he just seems like a really cool dude in one piece. So very happy that I got this figure in my collection plus you don't know how hard this was for me to acquire. I had to go through four different sellers on Amazon in order to get this figure. The first seller told me they didn't have it in stock anymore. The second seller said it was for pre-order, even though they didn't have it listed anywhere that it was for pre-order. And then the third one, I asked them first before I bought it if they have it in stock. They confirmed that they did. And then 24 hours later, they told me they didn't. So I was getting extremely frustrated. And then finally, the fourth seller had it in stock. And now I have this figure in my collection. But anyway, let's get into the review and start off with the packaging for Trafalgar Law. So basic packaging by Mega House's One Piece line. We do get black and blue for the main colors of the box looking pretty cool. We do get the window right there. It says One Piece on the top and Image of Law right there on the right. It says Trafalgar Law on the bottom, Toei Animation, and Mega House. The bottom of it is the blah 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 stuff that nobody cares about. We do get an image of the figure right there on the right. It says Variable Action Heroes Trafalgar Law. And then the top of it says Variable Action Heroes. The side of it says Variable Action Heroes Trafalgar Law. We do get a cool image of the figure right there on the bottom. And the other side of it is the continuing image from the front of the box along with his symbol. So that looks pretty cool. And then the back of the packaging, I have a random barcode sticker. But it does show a bunch of different poses you can get the figure into along with some of his accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure open and take a closer look at Trafalgar Law. Alrighty, so taking a closer detailed look at Trafalgar Law, and once again, Mega House did an incredible job with this piece. They executed the paint and sculpt extremely well, but they always do with their One Piece figures. The hat looks dope, I like the sculpt work on it. You can see all the little sculpt work all throughout it. And you can see it's all white, and we do get some gray paint shading, but it's more along the bottom of the hat and on the rim right there. And then we do get the black dots going all around the hat, hat as you can see there. So nice work on that. Uh, his hair, the sculpt work looks awesome. The bottom part of the hair is connected to the neck just like with some of the other One Piece figures. Uh, the face sculpt looks just like the character. We do get his earrings on his ears. Nice sculpt and paint on it. Uh, great, great paint work on the face. Nice and clean. The only issue I see is the... Uh, little dot of black paint right on his lip right there, but the paint's nice and clean for the most part. Uh, we do get some very nice paint shading on the skin tone, on the face, the neck, and then the torso area, so nice work on that, nice sculpt work on the muscle definition, and nice paint work on the tattoo, that looks awesome. Nice and clean all throughout it, so great job with the uh, tattoo on his chest and midsection right there. Then we get his hooded trench coat, which looks dope. It is brown, as you can see, and then there is black paint shading all throughout it, so that looks good. And I love all the sculpt, the wrinkles along the arm, going down the side, and all on the back right there. We do get like a yellow stripe going all the way down. And then we do get this logo or symbol that says Corazone. That looks pretty cool. Paint's nice and clean, same with the yellow stripe as well. And as you can see, there is black paint shading like around there, and then on the lower part of the trench coat. And they are on uh, hinges and I think ball joints so you can move them around so that's cool. So nice work on that. Even on the inside there is paint shading on it so that looks dope. I like the way the hood is sculpted as well, forgot to mention that. And then for the arms you can see the paint shading around the bicep right there and then around the, uh, the forearm. But I love the sculpt of wrinkles especially around the wrist, that looks, that looks cool. Very cool looking, and I love the tattoos on the uh, top of his hand and how it says death on his fingers. That looks awesome. And then we do get this white uh, like strap going around his arm with a yellow stripe. Paints nice and clean, and it is sculpted on there, so that's cool. Now for his pants, very nice sculpt work all throughout it. We do get great paint shading throughout it as well. You get the uh, silver button right there. You can see the loops for the belt. 
Uh, you can see his pocket sculpted on there. Just great sculpted wrinkles around the upper thigh, and then around the knees, and then around the ankles. That looks awesome. Well, my light got really bright. Sorry about that. And then we do get black dots all throughout his pants. And then we do get some sculpted wrinkles on the back of the pants as well, so that looks pretty cool. My favorite part, though, on the pants is how the uh, pants look all bunched up around the ankles. And then this piece right here is a separate piece, so it does move around. So that's pretty cool that we, they did that. And I like how you can see the stitching, actually, on the bottom. I didn't even notice that before. And you do see the seams going down the side as well on the side of his pants. And then we get his boots or shoes. And they're a metallic brown. I really love the paint that they used for them. We do get some nice sculpted wrinkles too on like the top of the foot. That paint looks great. And then we do get black soles. There's the bottom of them. Really nothing much going on there. The biggest issue I have is the ankle joints are so loose and they pop off way too easily. Same with the waist joint. It pops off way too easily. I think that is the biggest downside to this figure but other than that they did a phenomenal job with the detail they knocked it out of the park with the paint and sculpt but mega house usually does when it comes to their figures but anyway let's continue on moving on to the accessories we get a bunch of dope stuff included with law we do get his sword and sheath which is my favorite accessories out of everything and this sword is just detailed the hell out i mean the handle looks awesome I like how it's a lighter purple for the uh, wrappings going around, and then more in the middle, it's a darker purple, and we do get the white wrapping. Everything is sculpted, too. I really like how they did that, and then we get the gold at the end right there, that metal piece, and then I really like the way that this looks, the sculpt and the paint. Like, I like how they added in, like, a uh, brownish type paint and all the lines right there. That looks very cool. Very nice work on this. And then the blade just looks badass. We do get the gold piece right there at the bottom. And it's a very nice gunmetal gray type color. And it is metallic as well. But that looks freaking awesome. This sword is just badass. So we do get his sword right here. And then we also get his sheath. So as you can see, it's a dark green color. And then all these crosses are all sculpted in there. Paints nice and clean. Do get the gold tip right there, and same on the other side. And then we do get this uh, red rope that's wrapped all around the sheath right there, and then we get it tied and it's hanging down. So that looks pretty cool. Would have been nice if they added in some black paint shading on this red rope. I think it would have looked a little bit better. And this is like a softer, rubbery type plastic, and you can sheath his sword, and it looks awesome. Man, what a dope accessory. Like I said, definitely my favorite out of everything. That looks awesome. So we do get his sword and sheath, and then we also get nine interchangeable hands. So we do get a pair of fists, because what would an action figure be without a pair of interchangeable fists? But nice paint and sculpt work on the fists here. Uh, we do get some paint shading around the knuckles, but it's kind of weird because only some interchangeable hands have the paint shading on the knuckles, why other ones don't, so I found that a bit odd. But we do get his tattoos on the top of his hand, nice clean paintwork, and then we get the uh, letters tattooed on each of his fingers that spell out death, just like in the anime. Nice clean paintwork on all the tattoos on both uh, interchangeable hands there, the fists. So we do get a pair of those, and then we also get a pair of open hands here. And as you can see, only on the right hand, you can see the paint shading around the knuckles, but you don't see it on the left one. So that's kind of weird, and I don't know why they keep missing that. I noticed that on another One Piece figure. I think it was Sebo. But uh, nice clean paint work on the tattoos, as you can see. So nice job on that. We do get a pair of the open hands. And then we get a pair of gripping hands, which is meant for him to grip onto his sheath. And he does hold his sheath perfectly fine with these hands. But uh, nice clean paint work with the tattoos. As you can see there. So nice job on that. And then we get these hands here where he's got three fingers out with the left hand. I know he does like a move where he's uh, doing this hand sign. And then same with the right one. Kind of looks like he's pointing, but he does like another move, I think, with this hand. I still don't know what his ability really is. I don't even know what devil fruit he ate. But um, I do see paint shading on the right hand, but I don't see it on the left one. So like I said, it's odd. But a uh, nice clean paintwork with the tattoos on these hands. 
And then the last interchangeable hand is a right gripping hand, which is for him to grip onto his sword. We do see the paint shading around the knuckles on this, and nice clean paint work on the uh, tattoos. And then you see the sculpted fingernails. So those are all the interchangeable hands. And then we also get three interchangeable faces, then we get two interchangeable heads, we get one with the hat, and then one with his hair. So we'll take a look at the faces first. And we get this one right here that comes on the figure out of the packaging, which is like the smirking, smiling face sculpt. Nice sculpt work on it, and the paint is pretty clean for the most part. The only issue I have is I have a little black mark on the left side of his cheek and then on his uh, mouth right there. So that's a little disappointing, but other than that, the paint is nice and clean all throughout it. And I like how the sideburns, it's sculpted, the hair. Same with his beard, so I think that was pretty cool. And we do get his earrings on there as well. So we get that interchangeable face, and then we also get this one here where he kind of looks like he's mad. It's more like a serious type look. And we do get paint shading around the forehead. Very nice clean paint all throughout it. Nice job. We do get his earrings. I like the sculpt work on the sideburns and the beard. So we get that face. And then the last one here is the angry, yelling, screaming face sculpt. And I like... I like how they did in between the uh, eyebrows right there, they even painted it. It's sculpted and painted. But a very clean paintwork around the teeth, the tongue, the inside of the mouth. Very nice work. Verbal Action Heroes really kills it with detail. So those are all the interchangeable faces. And then we get the interchangeable hat and then interchangeable hair. So we did take a look at the hat before when we are on the detail part of the review. But we do get his hair here. Let me interchange it for you real quick so we can see what it looks like on the figure. Huh. Let's put a face on there because then it'll look weird without one. And let's put the hair piece back on. And pop the head on here. And there we go. Very nice sculpt work on the hair. And it is pretty sharp so be careful of that. I like how they sculpted lines in like each piece of hair too. Yeah, that looks great. Excellent sculpt work, man. That looks dope. But anyway, those are all the accessories we get with Trafalgar Law, which is really a decent amount of stuff, and I love all the op display options you have for this figure. But anyway, let's continue on. Now for the height of Trafalgar Law, he stands just about 7 inches tall. And then here he is compared to... The Variable Action Heroes Monkey D. Luffy figure and the Variable Action Heroes Portgis D. Ace figure. And then here he is compared to... The Variable Action Heroes Dracul Mihawk figure, the Variable Action Heroes Chopper figure, the Variable Action Heroes Nami figure, and the Variable Action Heroes Sabo figure. And then here he is compared to... The SH Figure Arts Awakening Warrior Super Saiyan Goku figure and the SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Vegeta figure. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review! So now for the articulation, we get one point at the upper neck and then one at the lower neck. So the upper neck joint looks up a pretty good amount and then looks down about that much. We do get very nice pivot up there and it does swivel as well. The lower neck joint goes forward and back does pivot and also swivel, so very nice movement at both those neck joints. We do get a point of articulation under the chest there. It only goes back about that much because it gets hindered by the coat. It does go forward a little bit better though. Uh, we do get slight pivot up there and it does not swivel at all, but we do get the swivel at the waist here and then it does go forward and back and then also pivot. So nice movement at the waist compared to the uh, torso. But you do have to be careful because the waist joint likes to pop out way too easily so that does get a little irritating and that is a little bit disappointing now for the arms we get some very nice shoulder movement we do have a butterfly joint that goes forward and back and then one that goes up and down and then we get a great armpit joint as you can see the very nice circular motion you could get out of the arm right there so i like that point of articulation and then the arms go out to the sides a lot more than 90 degrees so that's always awesome and the arms go up and down. No bicep swivel, so we will have to do it at the shoulder there. Double jointed elbows that bend in a little bit more than 90 degrees, and then we do get a swivel and a hinge at the wrist. Now the coat, the bottom half is articulated. They're on hinges, and then they're pegged in. So you can pivot them. They can go side to side. 
and then they hinge up and down. So I like that you can articulate the bottom half of the coat so it doesn't hinder like leg articulation, so that was cool. Now for the legs, they do go up 90 degrees, so that is good. Then they go to the back just a little bit, and then they kick out to the side about 90 degrees, so that's awesome. And then we do get swivel up there as well. We have double jointed knees that bend back all the way, so that is always cool. Now for the ankles, this is the biggest disappointment to this figure. The ankle joints are so loose and then they pop off way too easily. So that is extremely irritating and I think it's the biggest downside to this Trafalgar Law figure. But they do swivel back and forth, back and forth, they do swivel, they hinge up and then they hinge down and then we do get very nice pivot there and then some toe articulation. So overall, we get some very nice movement with this figure. It's just the waist joint pops off way too easily, and then the ankles, that joint is horribly loose, and the feet just pop off way too easily as well. So that's the biggest disappointments to this loft figure. But other than that, we do get some very nice articulation. But... Overall, I do highly recommend this figure, especially if you're a big One Piece fan, and once again, Mega House did an incredible job with a figure from their One Piece line. Yeah, there's a few issues, like how hindered the torso articulation is, you really can't get any movement out of it, so that's a little bit disappointing. And then another one is the waist joint, how it pops off way too easily, so that gets a little bit annoying. And then also, there is some loose joints, especially with the ankles, that really sucks because it's hard to stand the figure up plus those joints pop off way too easily so that gets extremely irritating but other than that we get some great articulation with this piece nice movement throughout the entire figure and then the accessories are just badass we get some awesome stuff included with trafalgar law and then the best part is the detail once again mega house did a phenomenal job with this piece and i'm very happy now owning this in my collection and if you would like to get this for your collection, he does retail right now for about 90, 95 bucks, but he is being reissued next month, so I would wait for that because he's only going to cost around 60, 65 bucks. I did get mine from Amazon, but like I said, wait for him to be reissued next month because he is pretty much available everywhere for pre-order. You could also check with my buddy from agelessgeeks.com or you could join the Ageless Geeks Facebook group. But anyway, that is my review of the Variable Action Heroes One Piece Trafalgar Law. Hope you enjoyed my review. If you want to support the channel don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share and favorite the video too and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it just give it a thumbs up anyway because action figures are awesome but thanks for watching i will see you later here and today we're going to be taking a look at the trafalgar let me get the window right there it says one piece on the top we do get an image of right there it says one piece on the top an image of law 300 we do get the window right there it says one piece on the top an image <laughs> The bottom of it is the barcode, uh, it's not a barcode, damn it. We get black and blue for the main colors of the box, like someone just got beaten up. We do get the window right there. <laughs> so you get some very nice circular motion right there. Nice movement on that, uh, sh uh armpit, uh, the variable action heroes. But other than that, the, pl the plane, <laughs> the paint, damn it. Get some nice paint and sculpt going on here. I like how you ski, how you could ski. Ski, let's go skiing. So, whoa, what?